their shaman transformation. To me, it's like a transformation that I was going through. I was going through a rough period, a rough period of time. So while I was carving it, I could relate to that transformation from human to the animal and drawing strength from the sculpture. When the shaman transforms into a, a polar bear, it assumes all his powers and its insight. So it becomes something more powerful than it actually is. So he draws that extra strength and that's what I was searching for in my own personal life. Uh, right now that uh, the posture itself is, it, it has kind of leaned over. He's going through the final stages when, it, when the transformation is complete. His head kind of works its way back forward and his transformation is complete. He's become the bear man. You don't mess with the bear man. It's a very powerful image that we have in our mythology. They're able to fly through the ground, fly through the skies, fly through ice, fly th through solid objects, across oceans, across the cosmos. It's unbelievable what they can do. So just the idea of it is I can draw strength from that. It gives me, it's like taking a bag full of Korean ginseng. Boom. <laughs> Suddenly, the bear man is also my spirit helper, which is very important. Over the course of my lifetime, I've been on many polar bear hunts, been around bears, but I've never shot one. So from that, I understand that the bear is my spirit helper. Kind of protects me, and I have to protect the image also. The sculpture, to me, is a very powerful image. In our mythology, when you see a shaman in transformation, you're not supposed to see that final transformation. If you do, it's a taboo. It, it can cause death to the person that watches something. If you watch the seal, and suddenly that seal transforms into something, that's a taboo. There are certain artists that really inspired me. Classical Rodin. I saw his works in uh, Paris. Wow. It takes a special, there'll be some special human being to get inspiration of that nature to create his work. Like, whoa, who is this guy? When I first started, I didn't know what a carving was. I didn't know how to carve, didn't know which tools I had to use or what material. And the only thing that I had was, uh, was a book on Inuit art that was traveling the world. So I opened it. Well, this, this is called stone carving. And after I flipped through, I said, one day I will be like these carvers. It took over 40 years to do it, but I, I managed to do, to walk the same path as they did.